SpanishPod101.com Pues muchas gracias y una vez más saludos a todos de pues que ya estamos ya estamos en la Ciudad de México otra vez y quiero saludarlos ahí donde están en, en su casa aquí también por favor coméntenme en YouTube díganme cómo están y hoy el tema pues es un tema genial es un muy buen tema porque estaremos hablando sobre la Virgen de Guadalupe and we are going to learn Spanish through it ok One second, because the light... Ahí está. Ok. So, bueno, muchas gracias. Gracias y saludos a Lía. Lía, muchas gracias por tu apoyo siempre. A Nick Yaga. Oh, it's been a long time since we don't see you. And please, uh, everyone, share this video with other learners. Share this video with your friends. We want to know... Uh, if you are watching us, we want to know how is it, how it is going, and please also on Facebook say hello to us. We want to say hello back to you. And well, um, queremos saludarlos a todos. Y el tema del día de hoy es la Virgen de Guadalupe. La Virgen de Guadalupe. Okay, so. Uh, it's a symbol, it's very important for Mexican culture. Maybe when you see Mexicans, you can also see them uh, with and maybe a picture, maybe they, are, they have something on their t-shirts with La Virgen de Guadalupe. And today we are going to learn Spanish through the stories. So short stories and we I want to before we before we continue antes de continuar me gustaría I would like to encourage you guys to uh, download uh, your free PDF cheat sheets it's very very easy to get them you can get them now let me let me actually show you let me show you what's going on Okay. So you can you can learn them right away with this. You can download them. You can download them, print them. This is one of the examples. Uh, romance and love, and there you can see um, some phrases. Also, you will get some words related to this this um, this topic, this subject. So get them now. They are for free. And well, anyways, vamos de regreso. Okay, thank you very much. Y vamos a seguir. So, ¿por qué es importante la Virgen de Guadalupe? What? Why is she so important? ¿Por qué es tan importante la Virgen de Guadalupe? Oh, oh, se congeló mi... mi un segundo. Se congeló mi imagen. Ok, creo que... Está de vuelta. Ahí está. Ok, ya. Yeah. Uh, my image was, was uh, freezing, but ok. ¿Por qué es tan importante la Virgen de Guadalupe? So, la Virgen de Guadalupe forma, forma parte de la identidad de los mexicanos. The Virgin of Guadalupe is part of the identity of Mexicans. And, well, as, you, as I told you before, you can see her in many places. Sometimes when there is a Mexican, there is the Virgin, there is la Virgen de Guadalupe. And I'm going to tell you the story. Okay, let's continue. Las personas se reúnen para cantarle las mañanitas cada 12 de diciembre. And actually, uh, kids don't go to school or they are, they are allowed to miss school that day. Algunos chicos, son, les, se les permite faltar a la escuela ese día. Y además se reúnen todos los 12 de diciembre para cantar las mañanitas. So, this is the song of happy birthday for us. 
y lo hacen todo, todo el tiempo. Ok, vamos a la siguiente. En la siguiente está aquí. Usualmente lo hacemos con mariachis y, eh, y también usualmente hay cantantes famosos que lo hacen en la televisión. So, you can watch this celebration on TV. There are also famous singers who sing to Virgen de Guadalupe on December. Ok. Está íntimamente relacionada con el catolicismo en México y en Latinoamérica. She is closely related to Catholicism in Mexico and Latin America. Ok. So, este es también eh, la Basílica de Guadalupe. As you can see, there are many people here. So it's totally full. Todos los 12 de diciembre está lleno. Está lleno. So it's, it's, it's crazy how many people you can see that day. So everyone surrounded la basílica. This is the temple. In, well, in Latin America for Catholicism. Y bueno, ella está íntimamente relacionada, bueno, perdón, sorry. ha estado presente en muchos momentos históricos como la independencia de México. Another reason why she's important is because she's been present in, in some historic events as the Independence Day. So, for example, one of our national heroes, instead of the Mexican flag, he used to use La Virgen de Guadalupe, her image. Mm -hmm. Así, así estaba. Yeah. Entonces, bueno. So, she's been present in many historical moments, such as the independence of Mexico. Ok. Bien. ¿Cómo se ve la Virgen de Guadalupe? ¿Cómo se ve la Virgen de Guadalupe? How does the Virgen de Guadalupe looks like? And I'm going to explain to you in general uh, like how she gets dressed, what does it mean everything she has on her like because you will find it interesting. Bien. Ella viste eh, un manto turquesa con estrellas. Ajá. Ella viste un manto turquesa con estrellas. She wears a turquoise cloak with stars, which is this one. Ok. Ese que ven ahí es el que tiene um, con ella. Y bueno, let me explain to you what it means. Op. Bueno, este manto era usado por los señores aztecas para demostrar su nobleza e importancia. So, back in the day, it was used by important Aztec people to show their, to show their importance and also their nobility, their position in the society. So, that's why she's wearing it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, well, I want to, I would like to see, hello to some of you, there's a quick pause to Rochelle Daffern, muchos saludos a Cosmic, muchos saludos también a algunos de ustedes, Vanilla Baby, hola, a Ale, desde Brasil, muchas gracias, muchas gracias a todos ustedes y espero, and I hope you guys are are learning a lot through this and some new words too okay so so this cloak was used by the Aztec lords to demonstrate the nobility and the importance of them or their position as I'd say in the as I said in the society she also wears ella también lleva un cinto negro en su cintura She wears a black 
Black Band on Her Waist. ¿Vale? Y este, este cinto se usaba entre los aztecas para indicar que alguien estaba embarazada. So you can know that she was uh, actually expecting a baby. Well, in, in la Virgen de Guadalupe, because that's how Aztecs would announce that someone was expecting a, or waiting for a baby. Mm -hmm. Entonces, eh, so as you can see, she has many Aztec symbols as well. Interesting, did you know that? Okay, vamos más, más a fondo. So this band was used among the Aztecs to indicate that someone was pregnant. Okay, vamos a seguir. Sorry. Ella es morena y tiene el pelo negro. She's brunette and she has black hair. So, yeah, and so you can see her. She also has... Um, well, there is something interesting about her. Hay algo interesante acerca de ella. And is that she was found 10 years after the colonization. So she she has a mixed race. She wasn't completely indigenous and she wasn't completely Spanish. So she was mixed. The thing is that in that moment there wasn't anybody old enough to look like her because she was discovered, she was found, she revealed herself just after 10 years of 10 years after the colonization ella se anunció o ella se reveló 10 años después de la colonización y no había ninguna mujer que luciera así so there wasn't any any woman women who would look like her uh, so yeah at least not old enough Not old enough yet. Bien, vamos a ver. Entonces, eh, vamos a hablar ahora acerca de la historia de la Virgen de Guadalupe. So, here is where the learning process starts. We are going to talk about some of the history. Bien, y bueno. Oh, perdón. Muy temprano, un día sábado, un indígena llamado Juan Diego caminaba desde su pueblo. So, on a Saturday morning. Ok. So, les voy a hablar un poco del contexto. I will give you some context as well. But I will try just to read it in Spanish. I will show very fast the translation. But try to understand it without uh, the translation, ok? Entonces, let me read it again, and I will give you some, I will add some, some comments or some information about it that might give you context, and then you will, you will, maybe you will be able to understand it, and if not, just wait for the translation, but try to understand it without. Muy temprano, un día sábado, un indígena llamado Juan Diego caminaba desde su pueblo él caminaba desde su pueblo estaba en una vereda en una vereda y él iba hacia sus clases de catecismo y a una misa so, entonces desde su pueblo caminaba hacia sus clases de catecismo y también a una misa ok cuando él llegó al cerro al cerro del Tepeyac escuchó una voz que lo llamaba él escuchó una voz que lo llamaba entonces Decidió, um, decidió subir 
cuando subió encontró a una señora de extrema belleza una señora muy bonita él encontró a una señora de extrema belleza cuando subió el monte bien bueno, well, just a, uh, a quick note, this, this cerro, this hill is called Cerro de Tepeyac and it is located in the north of Mexico City. This is where the Basilica de Guadalupe is built. You can, you can see behind the Basilica the, that cerro, that hill. Okay, bien. Uh, vale, ok, quick, <laughs> quick announce and uh, download your free PDF cheat sheets right now. I just show you how they work and well, you can download them, print them, keep them with you. So do it now. Don't don't think about it anymore. Just just download it. Join this community and start start learning with us for free, totally for free. Ok. Eh, pues vamos a seguir la historia de la Virgen de Guadalupe parte 2 ok, so hopefully you are with me I would like to say hello to some of you eh, muchas gracias a Eric, gracias por tu apoyo a Vanila, oh desde Nigeria Vanila desde Nigeria, wow, muchos saludos allá y bueno uh, Lía no sabía acerca de los símbolos que ella usa. I didn't know about her wearing Aztec symbols. Uh, really nice that she reflects Mexican culture. Yeah. So she's uh, she has all of these Aztec symbols and also here. And uh, well, probably uh, this encounter between worlds, the, between the Aztec and the Spanish, because she's brunette. And well, let me. A ver, ver. Maybe you can see her face like that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it's just that those are the lights that I point. I, I aim to my to my face. But hopefully, okay. But yeah. So that's her. That's her. Okay, vamos a continuar. Y también I also want to say he hello to my friends on Facebook. Muchos saludos a mis amigos en Facebook y muchas gracias por su apoyo. Espero verlos pronto y bien, vamos a seguir. Oh. Ahí en el cerro le confesó que era la madre de Dios y que quería un templo en ese cerro. Ahí en el cerro le confesó que era la madre de Dios y que quería un templo en ese cerro. Ok, so hopefully you got it. Un segundo. Oh. Ahí está. <laughs> There on the hill, she confessed that she was the mother of God and she wanted a temple on that hill. Okay. Vale. Y ahí está el templo construido que tiene más de 500 años y it is more than five years old And, well. la virgen se apareció de nuevo y le pidió a Juan que hablara con el obispo entonces so so she encoded Juan Diego which is this one this one here she 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 revealed herself four times to Juan Diego. The first one, when she was calling him, and the second one, when she appeared again on, on the top of the hill, and she wanted him to talk to the bishop, al obispo. ¿Vale? Bien. So, cuando regresó por pruebas, la Virgen le dijo que regresara al siguiente día. So, Juan Diego, Juan Diego saw her. He came back, he saw her again for proofs and she told him come back next day. Ven el siguiente día. Ok. Ahora... Mm, 
when he came back for proofs, the virgin told him, come back the next day. ¿Bien? Vale. Ok. Segundo. Pero Juan Diego no pudo porque su tío estaba enfermo. But Juan Diego couldn't because his uncle was sick. Entonces Juan Diego iba de vuelta y eh, había un tío enfermo que quería, que necesitaba ayuda porque probablemente iba a morir. So his uncle probably needed lots of help because he was going to die. Like he was, probably he was about to die. So Juan Diego couldn't meet her on that day. Bien. Entonces, eh, sorry, la historia de la Virgen parte 3. Más tarde, later that, that day, la Virgen lo visitó y le notificó que su tío estaba bien. So later that day, eh, the Virgin visited him. And notify him that his uncle was okay. She, he needed, he didn't need to take her, to take care of him more because he was okay. So nothing to worry about. Nada de qué preocuparse. Bien. A ver. Entonces, eh, María le dijo que subiera al cerro por rosas de Castilla y las guardara. María told him. To go up to the hill for roses from Castilla and keep them. Okay, so and save them, keep them. Okay, bien. Entonces, Juan Diego le enseñó las rosas al obispo y entonces creyó que en verdad era la Virgen. So, so Juan Diego showed the bishop these roses. The thing with the roses is that. Uh, they are not they don't grow in Mexico and also it's very impossible for it was very impossible for them to grow on that hill due to the climate con to the weather conditions and um, and, the, and the soil so so they were from Castilla and also in a season when they are not common So that's why when the bishop saw, saw them, he believed instantly because he thought it was impossible to grow those roses in that season, in that place, so fresh. Okay, and well, that's why, but there is also another thing. La imagen de María estaba donde Diego guardó las rosas. So then the image of Mary was where Juan Diego kept the roses. That's another thing. So when Juan Diego threw the, um, the roses and showed him to the bishop, both of them saw that the image of Mary, ambos vieron que la imagen de María estaba donde guardó las rosas. So And both of them saw this miracle, she was painted there, and that's when, where they got inspired by this, by this one. And you can see, you can still see this one, this, um, the image of Mary, the original, the original one, in the Basilica de Guadalupe. Uh, okay. Bien. So, that's more or less what happened, no? So he was like keeping them and then when he showed them there was the image of the Virgen Virgen de Guadalupe there. Okay. Muy bien. Entonces vamos a un resumen. I also have a have a, a bonus for you. I prepared something else, so don't go after this summary. Bien. Entonces, ¿por qué es importante la Virgen de Guadalupe? We, we talked why she's so important. I told you she's in the Basílica, which is a place where, uh, which is a place where she, um, well, one of the most visited places on earth 
for Catholicism. And it's the most important in, for Latin America. And behind this place, there is El Cerro de Tepeyac, where she appeared for the first time. Y bueno, ¿cómo se ve la Virgen de Guadalupe? También aprendimos que tiene símbolos aztecas. We also learned that she has some Aztec symbols. Y bueno, también aprendimos sobre su historia. That she revealed herself. Ella se reveló cuatro veces a Juan Diego. Y en la primera vez en el Cerro del Tepeyac. The first time eh, on Tepeyac Hill. The second time... Eh, Um, the second time again in, in the cerro, in the hill. The third time when Juan Diego was walking uh, from his uncle's house. And well, and there in the fort here on, when he was um, holding the, he kept the roses, where he kept the roses. Okay. Bien, so I also have here some phrases, aquí también tengo algunas frases And this is one, at least this is the most famous one Non-religious people and religious people say it It doesn't matter if you believe on the Virgin in Mexico or not, you have this one And it is, no, haga, no hagas que la Virgen te habla Ok So what does it mean? Because the tra literal translation is this. Don't pretend that the Virgin speaks to you. So if someone is calling your attention, someone is telling you, you did wrong, or, or someone is giving you instructions, someone, is is, uh, someone needs your attention, and you are not giving your attention back. Tú no estás, tú no estás uh, atendiendo, tú no estás dando atención, estás distraído, you're distracted. So, someone will say, come on, no hagas que la Virgen te habla. So, don't pretend someone else is talking to you, I'm talking to you, look at me, pay me attention. This is for you. No hagas que la Virgen te habla. Ok. Okay, so Ave Maria Purísima, which is, oh my God. Vean. Oh, Virgen del Buen Consejo. Ah, help the most, ¿no? Ayuda al más pendejo. Okay, so we want to encourage you to, um, to learn Spanish with us. Te queremos... Um, te queremos impulsar a aprender español con nosotros de una forma gratuita, in a free way, you don't need to pay. Join this community right now, you just need to go to this link, it's on the description, and also on Facebook, you can find us there. Uh, well. Y el siguiente tema es how to say cleaning items, items in Spanish. Cómo hablar sobre artículos de limpieza. Vale. Bueno, pues quiero saludar a algunos de ustedes. Eh, muchas, muchas gracias a todos los que estuvieron aquí en este live stream. Thank you to all of you who, who were in this live stream. And well, see you guys in the next time. Muchas gracias, qué bueno que la historia fue interesante. I'm glad that this story was interesting for you. Um, well, see you in our next video. Les mando un saludo desde la Ciudad de México y ojalá pronto puedan venir. Así que hasta luego chicos. Bye bye.